Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us as we go over the highlights for the New Mexico Challenge Week. The WikiTree Challenge is WikiTree's largest ongoing community event where volunteers work on growing the connections for the seven ancestors provided by our guests for seven days. And I want to uh, just share briefly that we have a sweepstakes going on. If your society or group uh, would like to enter for a chance to win for WikiTree to uh, have you as our guest star for a week, all you have to do is email me at azure at wikitree.com and Azure is A-Z-U-R-E. And we'd love to hear from you. There's a YouTube video out there that's on our YouTube channel, Wikitreeers on YouTube. Okay. So now to our highlights. So this week we had seven ancestors and they were John Denver, Manuel Gonzalez Vallejo, Edwin Gaines Fullenwinder, Thomas Wakefield Blackburn, Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, and Lou Wallace. There were a lot of uh, interesting finds that were submitted and a lot of different locations. And actually I did a little report from Wikitree Plus and not even all of the places that we um, got to within the CC7 for each of the profiles are listed on this list of locations. This list of locations has a lot of locations on it, just not all of them. So I'll show that in a little bit in the slideshow. But even here you can see there are 31 countries and all 50 states of the US. So that was really interesting how far out we went with it. Um, and like I said, there were a lot of interesting finds that were submitted and uh, military profiles that the different um, challenge participants submitted to the, the space page where we were tracking all of the collaboration and research that was done during the three weeks that we worked on these profiles on this extended challenge. All right, and so the first profile, of course, is John Denver, notable for being an American singer, songwriter, activist, and humanitarian. His profile has gotten some updates to it, some really great information about his uh, last name, which is Duschendorf. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but um, somebody has added some information about that last name and lots of great uh, information in the sources on that one. The second profile is Manuel Gonzalez Vallejo. And this one was picked from the New Mexico Genealogical Society's journal. Um, they had a two part over two, two different journals, a two part uh, article on this family, the Vallejo family. And uh, the second part contained information about Manuel specifically. So that's what we where, where we chose him from. And you'll hear more about him a little bit later too in the interesting finds. There's um, information in the research notes for this profile um, that is great to read up on because there's there's a lot a lot to this. The third profile that we did um, is one of two profiles from the Rotan, New Mexico, one place study. This is Edwin Gaines Fullenwinder. It's been great to see his profile really be filled out even more and more and more family added to him. I know, I think he started with about nine or eight or nine profiles and now he's over 2000. So that's, that's really great. Thomas Wakefield Blackburn is the second of the two profiles for the Raton New, New Mexico One Place study. And he is uh, notable for uh, composing the song Ballad of Davy Crockett. And there are there's some more information about uh, more of his literary, literary works on his profile here. 
Okay, and the notorious William Henry McCarty, or Billy the Kid, is our next profile, and he was definitely a challenge for us um, because of, um, I believe they have it written out in the research notes about um, his date of birth is in kind of mystery. Nobody's got it complete, and so you know, confirmed for sure. And so that makes things a little difficult. And then also his, you know, the sources have his father as Patrick McCarty, but we don't have a lot, of, we don't have any information on him. So there, we couldn't go anywhere from there. <laughs> so, and also his mother, we weren't able to add, we don't know enough about her. And so we weren't able to go any further. I think we actually ended up being able to go out from his siblings and then the, his stepfather. So that was that was one of the challenge challenges of the week <laughs> was uh, was Billy the Kid, and then Pat Garrett, the um, agent or lawman that is notorious for uh, being the person who killed Billy the Kid. Some really great images and great uh, profile that was written up for him on here. And then the last profile is Lewis Wallace. I think he has the most connections within seven degrees of all these profiles. Um, and so he was the 10th governor of New Mexico and is part of the uh, Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, uh, era and he was in he, he was the governor at the time that uh, Billy the Kid was active. He was also the author of Ben-Hur so really great to get to know more about this uh, this person. So overall I just wanted to show it in this way here are here's where we started with all the different ancestors so you can see that uh, uh, Pat Garrett had the most when we started at 4,668. And then when we ended, Lou Wallace ended up being the highest CC7 count at 7,108. So this just kind of gives you a breakout. The total increase for each of the ancestors is here um, because even though this is the amount of profiles that were added, um, there were connections that made that increase that CC7. So CC7, if in case anybody is wondering what that means, it's the connection count within seven degrees of that profile. So John Denver, for instance, would be degree zero. His parents, siblings, spouses, and children would be degree one. And then further away from him, you, you add a degree for each step away from him. So that's kind of what that looks like. The bounties have been added to the score sheet. So I'm just gonna refresh the page so y'all can see. We had 71 participants this for this three week challenge. And you can see we had a total of 110 bounties that were awarded, awarded during the week uh, for this challenge. And we had a total edits almost to 12,000, almost 4,000 profiles edited. So lots of work that was done by all of the members. Some really great, great work. Now I just wanna take you all through the little slideshow we've got put together for you. So we went to New Mexico for the three weeks. And as you can see, we really were almost everywhere. We were in every continent. So we really made tracks. Uh, this is kind of a different view of it. It's kind of a, like a heat map for the locations of where we were, the different countries. Really had a lot of coverage. It was really exciting. Interestingly enough, the closest connection and degrees, um, one thing we were looking at or were interested in to see is if there was 
what the connection was between um, the Whoa. three, Pat Garrett, Lou Wallace, and Billy the Kid. Um, but the closest Is one ended up between Pat Garrett and uh, Thomas Blackburn. So that was really interesting, 11 degrees. And that's the closest for the whole challenge. And then we have two connections within 13 degrees. It's a lot closer. So we have Lou Wallace with Edwin Fullenwinder and Lou Wallace with Thomas Blackburn, both of the Raton New, New Mexico one place study profiles. And then 14 degrees, there were three connections, all with Lou Wallace again. He seems to be uh, the one that really had a lot of close, closer connections. So he was 14 degrees from Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett. So I thought that was interesting. And then John Denver, he's 14 degrees from John Denver. So very interesting. So for John Denver's profile, this is where we started. We had uh, 248 connections at the beginning. Um, and now we are at 810. Love to see the difference between the, <laughs> the one and, you know, at the beginning and then at the end. It's just such a big jump there. So lots of, lots of places for John Denver that we went. Um, in Russia, you know, Europe, even into Africa, in South America. So just really very interesting. So interesting to see. You really can't say uh, that you wouldn't be able to do a challenge for somebody born in New Mexico, right? Because you end up in Russia or Kazakhstan. So <laughs> just, you could be anywhere. Here's a close-up view of uh, Europe and Russia areas. And here's the US for John Denver. Okay, and here's Min Wells. This is, he started out with quite a few. Um, let me bring up what he started out at. at. Let's see. So he started with 3,205 and we added 1,090. So we, well, no, we added 375. So, but the increase for the over, you know, with the connections added um, 1,090 within the seven degrees. So a good jump there. And here are the locations for profiles within seven degrees, the migration map. That's what this is basically showing. Um, the birth is in the red dots and then the death is in the blue dots. So, it, and then the arrows go from birth to death. So you can see where people maybe started in America and ended up in Brazil or wherever. So it's really interesting to see how that, where, where everybody went. Here's a close up. A lot, for, a lot of Spain and Portugal on this one, some France and Italy and some Greece. It's just really interesting. And then uh, the majority of the profiles within seven degrees for Manuel was uh, in middle America, South middle America, and then going down to Southern America, Mexico, Cuba, Puerto Rico. <laughs> so Manuel, it was one of our interesting finds himself. He was a maestro de herador. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he's a master farrier. So a farrier is a specialist in equine hoof care including the trimming and balancing of horses hooves. So he was also able to train others in the in this trade because of being a master of, of it. So I thought that was really interesting. And that was what was found on the survey. Everybody uh, voted that one up. So the next 
ancestor is Edwin Gaines Fullenwinder. Here's what Edwin started out with. <laughs> Let's see, that's uh, five, eight dots. So he had eight connections at the beginning. And here's where we ended up. Just massive increase for him. Just awesome to see. We added 545 profiles, but the number of uh, connections increased by 2005 in the three weeks. So wonderful to see that. And uh, Edwin is one of the profiles that got us almost into every state of the US just by himself, which is kind of interesting to see the coverage there. I just love seeing these maps. Such a great tool to have uh, via Wikitree Plus to be able to look up this information that way. And here's the US close up for him. So here are the interesting finds for the full and winder line. One of them is a Rolla Augustus full and winder sailed to the Isthmus of Panama in 1908. And he joined the ranks of more than 40,000 workers who were employed to build the Panama Canal. So they just list out how much he made per month. And sometimes he made a little bit more because he was promoted to a foreman conductor. And they shared about that 5,609 workers were killed during the construction of the Panama Canal and that it opened in 1914 after 10 years of construction. So that, that was really interesting. Just sharing some pictures here from the Wikipedia page. And the next one for uh, interesting find for this line, William Julius Citron was an inventor and he was granted several patents for rather strange devices <laughs> like a tonsoral apparatus to apply lather to the face of a person and also to provide means whereby the face may be dried and powdered with either warm air, steam or heated water delivered into contact with a with the face of a person or a carriage for seating spectators mounted on revolving, revolving supports that give an impression of rolling vehicles or traveling motion at rapid speed. So a lot, lots of different ones. And I've actually, I found one, uh, one of his patents in a book. And so that's what's at the bottom there, the patent information and then the image of the patent item. I thought that was really interesting. All right, and on the same line again, full and winder, James E. Caldwell attended Northwestern University and achieved prominence during his college years in Chicago as a leader of a Dixieland band, a jazz band called Jimmy Caldwell's Jazz Jesters. And this is actually a picture of them. His band at various times featured such jazz greats as Benny Goodman, Bix Beiderbeck, and Eddie Condon. He was active in the Willamette Valley Jazz Society in the Oregon City Jazz Society. I thought that was very cool. I, I spent a lot of years growing up in Oregon City, Oregon. So, <laughs> all right. Thomas Wakefield Blackburn is the next ancestor we'll talk about. So at the beginning, he had no connections. It was just him all by himself, unconnected to the tree. And this is where we are now. <laughs> So starting with one, we added 416 profiles. So by the end of the three weeks, he had gained 2,645 connections. So that's really something else. And here is the migra migration map for profiles within seven degrees of Blackburn. Again, this one's all over the US. <laughs> Here's a close-up of Europe, where they um, were active in Europe for this uh, profiles within seven degrees of him. And here's the US. You can see there's profiles in Canada and Guatemala, so all over. One of the interesting finds that we had for um, the challenge was on his 
um, lines. So when the news of the sudden death of James Andrew Link, working as a train conductor in Guatemala, came to his brother, it was initially reported he had died in a train crash. But the truth about his death emerged only two weeks later. James Link did not meet his death in a railroad wreck, but was stabbed by an infuriated passenger of his train who became enraged when he disarmed him of a revolver. The passenger, who had been drinking heavily, became noisy and drew a revolver, threatening other passengers on the coach. Link took the gun away from him and went into the next car. Upon his return, the fellow jumped on his back and stabbed him through the shoulder, almost to the heart. So that's really sad. Okay, and of course, Billy the Kid, our next profile. This is where he started with uh, 52 profiles within seven degrees. And now he is here at 558 profiles within seven degrees. So we added 217 profiles, but increased his connections to uh, by 506 profiles. And here's his map of migration for profiles within seven degrees. The majority in, is in the US and Europe, it looks like. Here's the drill down. Of course, there would be a lot more in Ireland and the UK if we knew more about his parents. I'm sure we would have had quite a few more dots on the map here. And here's the drill down for the US for him. And Pat Garrett is our next profile we'll talk about. Here's where he started at 4,668. He was the highest one when we started. And we added 435 profiles, increasing his connections by almost 1,800. And here's, again, this one's all over the place, Africa, uh, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, all over the place. We really went all over the map with these profiles. It was great to see. Here's the drill down for Europe. And the US. And Lou Wallace is our last profile. Again, he started out at 2,750. We added 400 profiles for him, but we increased his connections by adding those 400. We connected to a lot of other profiles that were already on Wikitree. So his CC7 uh, increased by 4,358 by doing all those connections. So that's awesome. Here it is, the difference. <laughs> wow. And here is his uh, migration map for the profiles within seven degrees. Another one where it's almost completely covering um, the US, but also the UK area on the map. So here's the drill down. Really, Scotland, England, Ireland, all over. And then here's the US. All right, and so here's another interesting find that was submitted um, in that one on the survey that we did. This house originally built in 1857 in Springfield, Illinois for John Wycliffe Taylor, minister and judge of the Sangamon, Sangamon? County Court from 1852 to 1856, and his wife, Jemima Gray, later served as a recovery center for prostitutes and then as a school for African-American children. The city of Springfield issued a demol demolition permit in 2013, but the Springfield Project, a community development organization, took over the ownership of the property and had the dem demolition permit lifted. The Taylor House will serve as a heritage community center. So that's really cool. Another interesting find, I think this is the last one, 
is John Test, uh, Wallace maternal grandfather, ran a grist mill. And so this picture is what uh, a grist mill. As he ground the corn or for grain, he read law books. In 1812, he was granted a license to practice law. Six years later in 1818, he was elected judge of the third Indiana Circuit Court serving from 1816 to 1819. And in 1822, he was elected to Congress as a Democratic Republican in the newly created Indiana Third District and served three non-consecutive terms in the House of Representatives. And then one of his daughters, Mary Hall, and Wallace's aunt married James Raridan, who also served two terms in Congress as a representative for Indiana. So it's kind of interesting all the connections that happen. And all right, well, I just want to say thank you to all the wonderful wiki treaters that helped out during the challenge. It was an extended challenge due to circumstances, but we really had a lot of fun and really appreciate all the work that was done by all of the Wikitree members. And that is it for the highlights for this challenge week for New Mexico. Does anybody have any questions or wanna see anything? You guys good? <laughs> Did you fall good. asleep on me? <laughs> I'm good. It's just like you. I love seeing the little circle chart <laughs> of where they've started at and then how full it can be at the end of a of a challenge. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Or if they're connected to the other six people that are on the challenge, you know, what at what level are they connected and yeah, so I, I find that all so interesting, especially people from all over, right? Because Billy the Kid was from New York, and he's connected to Lou Wallace by 14 degrees. It's like, that's really interesting to me how they're all connected anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some that you don't even think they would be connected, but somehow they, they are, are because of ancestors that traveled, whether it was because they mm -hmm. were forced to or because they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to stop the recording I'll I'll um edit it down